Hello and welcome to another edition of UFO Video Addicts. Let me give you a preview of what I got coming up in this video. Uh, the first is a mothership over San Bernardino, California. Let's see, I also have this older video from uh, 2010 of a UFO over New York City filmed by a CBS News. Let's see, also have this uh, night cam view of some UFOs over Iraq taken in 2008. Uh, let's see, this is a uh, video of this guy here, Robert Jacobs, talking about um, a testing that they were doing on some Atlas missiles and how a UFO came into frame or, you know, from based on the video that they, uh, or the film that they watched, a UFO came in and uh, disabled the Atlas missile. And then uh, this is um, a video of him on CNN, uh, basically like talking to a group of people about it with Bill Nye. And this is just an example of, you know, don't be, don't be like Bill Nye. Let's see. This is a video of this um, UFO that shows up and then this light all of a sudden pops up. Also have this video from 2020 last year in February. And this guy filmed some strange, I mean, he calls them atmospheric waves going through these clouds. Very, very strange. Uh, let's see. This is an article about a pilot, another pilot who has come forward to reveal that a triangle shaped UFO or that he saw a triangle shaped UFO. And then last is this uh, CIA documents reveal Russian scientists believe Tunguska meteor was an exploding UFO and not a meteor. But anyways, uh, let's go to this first video here. Let me go full screen. This was just uh, uploaded on the 27th. Check this out here. <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh, you see, there's another light over here, but I wonder if this is just a normal plane because it is moving kind of slow. But you also, you get a, uh, an indication of how big this thing is. Wow, you know what? No, this is just one UFO, and then these are just a bunch of other lights around it. Oh, this is one of those UFOs that are spitting out. A bunch of little UFOs. Another one of these videos. Anyways, I, I don't want to play the whole video. I'll leave a link in the description. Let me go on to this next video. Now, this one was taken in 2010. This is a news crew. And I think there were reports of UFOs in the city. So, the news crew went out there and uh, this is what they caught. I mean, this is, this is an eight minute video and essentially, you know, this is all we're seeing, but let me just go to the end. So you see, um, you know, like the number of people that were watching it. Let me just go back just a little. So you see where, where they're at here. Look at all these people though, that are, that are watching it. And there are still people who, you know, who want to deny that, um, these things are out there or, or who want to like. Again, you know, I perform mental gymnastics to try and explain it away as something conventional. But uh, check out this footage here. Apparently this was taken with a night cam, so I don't think these things could be seen uh, with a naked eye. Big vertical streaks. It's a country that's been at war for half a decade, so it's nothing new to see aircraft in the skies above Iraq. 
but the web's alive with questions over footage, which seems to show something else. I have no idea what the hell they are. Earlier this year, a group of Marines saw something in their night vision they couldn't explain. Is that the main one over there? Yeah. They were used to seeing flares on the skyline, but this they thought was different. Man, that's weird. Let me see your uh, light. This video shows the aftermath of a bombing in the northern city of Kirkuk in September 2006. As the cameras capture the rescue effort, one is taken by an object on the skyline. Look at that thing. Oops, let me go back to that. Do you see that little thing there? Look at this thing. Oh. Look at that thing right there. Let me go back again. You see that? Watch this thing right here. Hmm. Yeah, that thing was moving a little too fast to be. A triangular object over Baghdad. It disappears as quickly as it arrives. Yeah, now that triangle uh, was most likely one of ours. But, you know, if people go back and um, look throughout history, you know, all of our wars going back thousands of years, even like even the Romans 2,000 years ago, reported seeing objects in the sky. And uh, again, you know, it's, um, it's like, you know, when, when, when our scientists observe, let's say, uh, two groups of monkeys or, or chimps, you know, that, that, that war, right? Like, look at Jane Goodall. I think Jane Goodall, I mean, she probably, you know, interacted with them. But, I mean, there's a type of um, uh, anthropology that um, where the scientists, they don't involve themselves. You know, they just, they just stay back and observe, right? Um, interactions with animals, well, you know, apparently to the advanced species, you know, we're basically the monkeys, except, um, we, you know, we have the ability to talk and use opposable thumbs to build more destructive weapons. Um, you know, so yeah, we're not alone on this planet, folks. Anyways, uh, let me go on to this next video. Yeah, now check out this one here. This is this guy describes seeing or a um, a craft UFO shooting out um, a missile out of the sky. Check this out. The camera was programmed to follow the missile automatically and run for six minutes, long past the point where the missile was visible. Now, what we didn't know is what else we had got besides the missile. After the film was developed. Project director Major Florenz Mansman called Jacobs into his office, and Major Mansman was not alone. There were two guys in gray suits in there, civilian clothes. They were not in the Air Force. They were from somewhere else. They never identified themselves. They could have been CIA, OSI, OSS. Jacobs was asked to watch his test film in the presence of these mysterious officials. The nose cone spread out. The warhead was quite plainly visible. Something flew into the frame. What I saw was a circular object. It was a classic flying saucer. And it shot a beam of something at our warhead. You have to imagine this thing is flying along at several thousand miles an hour. This stuff is flying along. And something comes into the frame and ch chasing it. And comes in like this and fires at it. And goes around like this and fires at it. And goes around like this and fires at it. And fires at it like this and then goes back out that way. What the hell could do that? That was exactly what Major Maxman wanted to know. And he said, what was that? And I said, it looks to me like we got a UFO. And he said, you are never to say that again. As far as you're concerned, Lieutenant Jacobs, this never happened. And I was sworn to silence, reminded of the, security, of, of the severity of a security breach, and told to leave the room. Eighteen years went by with that image in my mind. After 18 years of silence, Jacobs felt compelled to go public. When he did, the official Air Force response was astonishing. The Air Force denied that I was ever there. Yeah, imagine that. So now, okay, now he tells this story. Now here he is on CNN telling the story. Now this is, you know, an an educated man who is so educated he knows all the things that can't be, and that's sometimes a problem with these quackademics. In fact, I mean, he's a fake scientist, anyways. 
But, um, yeah, you know, sometimes people who are so smart, they, they can tell you all the things it can't be. And it's the, it's the person who isn't so smart that he, you know, he only knows possibilities, or at least he should only know possibilities. But anyways, uh, check this out. Of good, respectful research. So they, the guys from Officer may not have seen the UFO, but they saw the results of it. I saw the damn thing on film with my own eyes, so don't call me a liar, and you weren't there. I, I was. With all due respect, I'm not calling you a liar. It's just quite a step to say there was a film with remarkable images on it that the CIA confiscated. Which I it's saw, and which they did. Yeah, which is quite a step from there to say it was definitely spacecraft from another civilization. That's the leap it was, that the skeptical it was, community is reluctant to hey, take. Hey, pal, li listen to me. I didn't say it was a, a spaceship from another civilization. I said it was something in the air that we couldn't identify. Of course, you know, yeah, I'm going to agree with him there. It's not from another civilization. It's it's a spaceship from, you know, one of our neighbors. But it's definitely an advanced craft that has anti uh, or, or, or defeats gravity. And, you know, you have morons like this guy trying to, again, he saw the footage. He, you know, was a part of the group that, um, uh, uh, constructed the telescope that took the footage and then you know like he describes the pe people from some high levels in government questioned them about it and then again you have morons like this guy here this quackademic trying to tell him what he didn't see so you know yeah, don't don't be like Bill Nye never be like Bill Nye he's a moron anyways let me go on to this next video now check out this video here. See now here, this is a type of stuff that, you know, some of these people, this is called evidence. And somehow people like Bill Nye, they will perform all kinds of mental gymnastics to try and explain this away as opposed to just, you know, you, you coming to or using Occam's razor and coming to the conclusion that, hey, if there's advanced craft in our, in our spot, in our skies, in our oceans, all the time, it's most likely because, you know, we, um, we have these advanced species that share the planet with us. And another thing, um, as far as that, um, that UFO shooting that missile out of the sky, you know, if, if again, now for sure, I am not saying that, um, all of these UFOs are not from other, uh, other planets because there are so many planets out there that yes, we have to be being visited by some of them. Some of them, yes, and even from other dimensions. Yet I definitely believe that there are multiple dimensions out there and that there are uh, entities who are, you know, who have existed for so long that they do know how to travel in, in and out of dimensions and they probably do come and visit our, you know, our dimensions. But all of these UFOs that are blowing up our missiles or turning off our nuclear uh, missiles, they're doing it to protect their home. They're not, you know, they're not, yeah, coming from, you know, uh, millions of light years away to, to turn off, uh, you know, our nuclear weapons or blow up our bombs because they're worried how it's going to impact uh, their home planet. They're turning these things off because they live on this planet and they're basically taking the, picking the matches away from the, uh, from the kids. Or, you know, I'd like to call, we're, we're just the uh, talking surface monkeys. But anyways, uh, let me go to this video here. You know, watch this one here. This is, this guy caught some strange atmospheric waves, he calls them. Let me go about here. Check this out. You know, I just heard a bomb go off. So I wonder, I mean, could this be like waves from like uh, um, some bombs exploding no but you know what but it would but if, if we do that it would the smoke would also be dissipating you know could this be a remnant of maybe these are cloaked crafts and you know maybe we're just catching them because they're going through the cloud there that cloud layer yeah, could this be uh, evidence of cloaked craft? Hmm. Don't know. Description or the uh, link will be in the description. Let's see. Yeah, you know, I did the um, video the other day about a uh, pilot, and actually, it's been all over the news. 
about the American Airline pilot uh, talking about seeing a uh, cylindrical shaped UFO flying over his head. Well, apparently another airline pilot comes forward, saw a triangle UFO over Texas. An aviation and military intelligence news blog called Deep Black Horizon reported on a UFO seen by an American airline pilot over New Mexico. You can listen to a recording of the pilot reporting the UFO right here. In the recording, he describes seeing a cylindrical cruise missile type of thing. Since sharing the recent pilot UFO sighting, the Black Horizon has gone on to divulge about another incredible UFO sighting. A second airline pilot has come forward to report on a UFO they also saw during a flight, but back in 2018, they were flying over Northeast Texas when they saw a triangular shaped craft. Check out an artistic rendition of what the UFO may have looked at and more details from the Deep Black Horizon blog below. Hmm, I can't make this um, image any bigger. But you know that I'm going to I'm going to say that's one of ours. This guy saw this triangle. If this thing looked like that, it's probably uh, one of our military top secret military craft. But anyways, uh, the link will to this uh, article will be in the description. Let me go to this last one here. Yeah, that this one, the CIA documents reveal Russian scientists believe Tunguska meteor was exploding UFO. Recently released CIA documents reveal that top Russian scientists came to the conclusion through radiation testing and carefully revisiting eyewitness accounts that the catastrophic Tunguska meteor explosion in Siberia was, in fact, an exploding UFO. In a 1969 paper published in the USSR Academy of Science, Alizev Zolotev and other Soviet Union scientists carefully re-examined one of the history's greatest explosions credited to an errant meteor that blew up in Tunguska skies over Siberia. The damage from the event was horrific on that June 30th day in 1908. Although the object exploded in the atmosphere and never reached the ground, it instantly fell an estimated 80 million trees and literally blew people out of their houses, with some landing many yards away without their clothes and with their hair burned off. Russian scientists theorized meteor was UFO. According to the documents, this team of scientists measured radiation before and after the event and concluded that such a hike in radioactivity in Tunguska's atmosphere could have only been caused by a nuclear explosion, which didn't exist in 1908. Moreover, after carefully examining all available eyewitness accounts, scientists found some told of the so-called meteor making spectacular maneuvers to seemingly correct its earthbound course. As a result, the Russian scientists theorized that the Tunguska object was some sort of off-worldly spaceship rather than a humongous chunk of space rock. Hmm. Yeah, again, you know, um, we're not alone on the planet, folks. We have never been alone on this planet. You know, whoever these people are, they've they've been uh, existing and playing a role uh, in in our lives. You know, ever since we came into existence, you know, ever since we were designed to uh, to extract gold out of the ground. Again, you know, I mean, think about think about all all civilizations, and then you know, go back as far as you can think. Right. Humans coveted gold, but you can't eat gold. You can't use gold to keep warm and you can't use gold for shelter. So ask yourself, why are you? Hum why did humans covet gold? And we still covet gold. I mean, now, you know, I mean, there's definitely um, a lot of um, industrial uses for gold. So, you know, gold does have an, uh, a value to it. But again, what did our what did our early ancestors need gold for? Why was there such a desire to dig this useless metal, yellow metal out of the ground? It's because that's what we we're designed to do. So anyways, um, that is going to be it for this video. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I have more things like this. Take care.